Hey, good morning. It's Patricia Murphy. It's Wednesday. This is Seattle Now. Bicycling groups and doctors agree. Helmets save lives. It's a law in Seattle to wear one on your bike. But Thursday, the Board of Health is expected to repeal the helmet law because it's being disproportionately enforced. We'll get details from KUOW's Gracie Todd in a minute. But first, let's get you caught up. Last week, it was the mask. Today, the photo of your vaccine card on your phone could be the next pandemic item to start phasing out. Public Health's Dr. Jeff Duchin has a press conference later today to update the county's vaccine verification policy. It's been in place since last October at restaurants, bars, and other indoor businesses in King County. Mayor Harrell will also have some news about return-to-work plans for city employees. There'll be a change to the way Boeing rolls out the new Dreamliners. The government told the company Tuesday the Federal Aviation Administration, not Boeing, will certify each new 787 as airworthy. That's notable. In the past, the job was entrusted to Boeing employees with oversight from the FAA. Production flaws have held up the plane since May 2021. In a statement, the government told NPR the oversight will confirm the effectiveness of measures taken to improve the 787 manufacturing process. And a UW postdoc student now has his name on a comet. Pedro Bernardinelli and University of Pennsylvania cosmologist Gary Bernstein spotted it last year. The Bernardinelli-Bernstein comet is the largest comet ever observed. It's 85 miles wide. That's almost double the size of the last really big one, the hale comet. It'll come close to Earth in 2031, but won't be visible with the naked eye. I used to commute by bike sometimes, and at the time, my helmet was one of my most important parts of gear. Head injuries are no joke, and helmets are the law. But in the last few months, that law is getting some scrutiny. The data shows it's inequitably enforced and targets people of color and people experiencing homelessness. Thursday's Board of Health vote will determine the fate of the law, but helmets are still really important. KUOW reporter Gracie Todd is here to shed some light on this for us. Thanks for taking the time, Gracie. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's good to be here. So the bike helmet law has been in and out of the news for a while now, and the original King County law actually dates back to like 93, and it was updated to include Seattle in 2003. Let's talk about the original intent of that law. Yeah, so the original intent was to encourage more people to wear helmets. Um, This was only less than 20 years after the modern helmet was invented in 1975. And then in the 1980s and 1990s, more and more research surfaced showing that helmets did reduce the risk of head injury. So lawmakers in Washington reacted with a flurry of legislation, not just in King County. Between the 1990s and 2000s, 32 cities and counties across the state, including King County and Seattle, adopted all ages helmet laws, which required all bicyclists, no matter how old you are, to wear a helmet. Um, Still today, Washington has more cities and counties with this law than any other state. Okay, so we got this great new technology. The helmet was invented. Everybody agrees it's an important part of your gear. But the law actually has a good chance of being repealed on Thursday. And one issue at the heart of this matter is this inequitable enforcement of the law. Tell me about the numbers. What do they show about enforcement of infractions on helmets? Absolutely. So enforcement of this law is following the much broader trend of over-policing of non-white and especially black people. An analysis of helmet infractions in Seattle from 2003 to 2020 This was an analysis completed by Ethan Campbell on behalf of the Central Seattle Greenways. And it found that black bicyclists received these helmet infractions at a rate nearly four times higher than white cyclists. Indigenous cyclists and Hispanic or Latino cyclists are also disproportionately targeted by enforcement of this law. And Campbell later completed a further analysis of this data in several additional cities in King County, found disproportionate enforcement present in eight of the 11, which he analyzed. And then there's even more analyses on this. So one by Crosscut, published in 2020, found that helmet law violations between 2017 and 2020, nearly half of them went to people experiencing homelessness. And this sort of enforcement, of course, causes real harm. There's the fines, the expense, of course. 
also the fact that cyclists can be suddenly stopped by somebody wearing an official uniform and carrying a gun just because they weren't wearing a helmet. And non-white people who who are cycling disproportionately have to deal with that, along with all the other inequities which work to limit their mobility. And Gracie, this is exactly the kind of information that SPD, Seattle Police Department, considered when it announced it was deprioritizing certain infractions, including bike helmet enforcement. What's happening here at SPD? Yeah, so that was just last month that SPD said it would no longer be stopping people for minor traffic violations, and that includes the helmet law. And really for the last few years, it already been enforcing this law at a fairly low level. But this is up to the discretion of any given law enforcement administration. So this applies to the present SPD, and it applies only to Seattle. And this law covers all of King County. So there's still a lot of potential for harm to be done. But I have heard from Board of Health members that they were really happy with SPD for for stepping back enforcement of this law. It sounds like the Board of Health is evolving its opinion on this. Have they officially changed their stance since advising this approach almost 30 years ago? So I wouldn't say officially, but it it's, does seem like they are gearing up to take a vote this Thursday and that they are going to vote to repeal the law. And primarily that is because of the enforcement. There's also some questions about the effectiveness of the law and actually getting helmets on people's head. But the enforcement is the number one thing they're concerned about because racism is a public health issue. And the board stated that in a resolution passed in 2020. And in that resolution, the board committed to reviewing how the laws and policies it has enacted have contributed to or suppressed racial justice and equity. I spoke to Lisa Herbold, one of the board's newest members, And she said that she's been hearing a lot from the community that they don't want the board to just make correct statements about racism and its harm. They also want those statements backed up by actions. An oft repeated refrain from the community is discontent when we rightfully name a problem but don't take actions to address the problem. It's one thing to correctly identify racism is a public health emergency. And once you do that, you got to address the policies that can correct those disparities. So, Gracie, if this law is repealed, is there concern that, you know, fewer people are actually going to put a helmet on because there is no actual threat from law enforcement or an infraction at that point? Right. Absolutely. So this is a really controversial topic. There's really no way to study this in a controlled environment, so it's hard to determine what impacts are due to the helmet law compared to other third variables. And that means that sometimes even those on opposite sides of the debate point to the same evidence as rationale for their position. One example is a study at Harborview. It found that among cyclists admitted to Seattle hospitals, the proportion of those with head trauma did not significantly increase or decrease after the law went into effect in Seattle. But the proportion of head trauma cases, which were major, uh, like very severe, did decrease slightly. So those who want the law to stay around say that this is evidence that the law prevented major head trauma. Those who want to repeal say that there are many third variables at play. People were kind of coming around to helmets in general, they say. There were education campaigns. There were also many more protected bike lanes installed around Seattle around the same time. So that could have decrease the prevalence of major head injuries. You know, Gracie, what about the medical community? Since everyone agrees that helmets do save lives, what are they saying about this potential repeal? Yeah, for sure. So even within the medical community, there's a lot of controversy. And this is really heated. In um, an October board meeting, this issue came up and there was, I think, around an hour of public comment on the helmet law specifically. People from both sides felt very strongly about their position, and there were a lot of medical professionals there. I spoke to Steve Mooney, an epidemiologist at the University of Washington. He told me that based on what he's been hearing, medical professionals who look broadly at the structural factors involved in public health tend to think that the harm caused by the law is outweighing the benefits if there are any. While those who work with head trauma patients directly and are seeing those impacts, they're tending to oppose a repeal of the law. And so what there is broad agreement on is that, one, it's important to encourage the use of helmets. 
And two, inequitable enforcement is an issue. So Beth Ebel, director of the Harborview Injury Prevention and Research Center, said that the flaw is not in the law, but in how it's been enforced. And so she does not want to see it repealed. At the end of the day, I don't want to be forced to choose between protecting your brain and protecting the equity and dignity view. These are both good and we need them both. They go hand in hand with treating people, the whole person, well. Okay, I'm sure bicycle advocates have a lot to say. Is there consensus within the bicycle advocacy community? From what I've seen, yes. I think broadly speaking, local bicycle advocates want to see the law repealed. They say helmets are great, but the helmet law is not. And they say, kind of like the board, they're echoing the sentiment that there are many more effective measures which encourage people to wear helmets, but don't cause these other harmful effects. So this is Lee Lambert, executive director of the Cascade Bicycle Club. I think we all have a role in society to examine how laws impact folks who are not in the majority population or people without privilege and power. The fact is that helmet laws make people afraid to cycle and reduce cycling rates. And particularly, we want to make sure that people of color and people experience homelessness don't experience unnecessary trauma because of interactions with law enforcement. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot to consider around this law, Gracie. Figuring this out is going to be really important as the city brings in more e-bikes and scooters to encourage people to ride. Yeah, absolutely. I think what's really interesting about this is there's so much agreement, and that's the main thing. Helmets are important. We want people to be safe. We know they're effective. That's what I'm hearing from people on all sides of the debate. When it comes to e-bikes, I reached out to SDOT, and they told me that They want to encourage everyone to wear helmets, and they have been taking steps to increase access to helmets for all bicyclists, including those on e-bikes. We can encourage people to wear helmets, but they have to have the helmet. What other ways is the Department of Health trying or thinking about encouraging and getting people helmets to actually use? Yeah. So they say they want to invest in education programs, and also they want to expand access to free or low-cost helmets. Um, Board members have introduced a resolution that will also probably be voted on this Thursday, and that would commit them to making these investments. Also, at least some Board of Health members and many advocates say they want to see more investment in safe infrastructure. So protected bike lanes particularly, those are buffering vehicles from bicycles. And that's because helmets are really effective and important last line of defense for a cyclist. But safer roads can make it less likely that a helmet will become a lifesaver. Thanks so much, Gracie Todd. Really appreciate your reporting on this. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you. Thanks for listening to Seattle Now. Jenny Cecil Moore produced today's show. Matt Jorgensen does our theme music. I'm Patricia Murphy. See you tomorrow. 